person in abundance, right? So it looks like I can't finish my EIN until... Good morning. Back in buys today. I think I'm gonna still follow Shortcut to Shred for this week while I'm figuring my training out. I want to come up with my own program, um, but I want to lo learn those Olympic lifts, so... Yeah. This is a pre workout. <laughs> I never have any clean shaker cups. <laughs> Made a trip to LA again. <laughs> I've got uh, Bubba here. Um, where? Oh, well, I was warming up, little legs. Oh, Getting ready for the leg day, warming up, yeah. So he doesn't skip leg day. I don't. Hey, okay, look, I was scrolling through Facebook and I had like a ton of buff box ads that came yeah. up. Uh, did you produce those videos? Oh yeah, right, right in my the comfort of our little uh, warehouse. Oh, no, you're so good. And then uh, we kind of always exchange like marketing ideas yeah. and um, like different apps we're using. So the last one he told me about was Legend. Legend. Right. Super cool app uh, if you want to add like text on top of your uh, photos and videos in a square box and use that. I use Hype Type and Love it. you've been kind of using Love that it. too, right? Create legendary stories. Right? So, Hyping up my stories. And how do you feel like that's made a difference in your content? Um, I think we're definitely getting a lot more engagement. You know, people kind of want to look at it a little more. It catches their attention a little bit better. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's been a lot better. And the, the stories to me are getting so much more uh, views than just a typical post. So um, definitely recommend anybody use those stories. Yeah, no, and um, I mean, you guys have seen the power of what engagement looks like using Instagram stories and directing someone to a call to action. Yeah. That's exactly what you guys are doing. So we're doing. Like the swipe up feature to like linking love, love to your swipe products. Up. Yeah. Right? And especially for what you guys do with BuffBox, like being able to link back to the partners you're working with. Yeah, quick and easy as possible to get people to the pages they want to go to. It's the name of the game. That's awesome. So yeah. what deals do you guys have running for Christmas? Man, we got so many deals. So uh, right now we're offering 30% off any pro plan, uh, 3, 6, 12 months, monthly, whatever you want. So 30% off. Claim it while you can. Use code BUFF30. Uh, also, if you want to add a free BuffBox shirt, check out. Uh, I'll show use, you guys how to make a crop top out of this too. It looks really it cool. <laughs> so uh, use code buff30, 30% off. Use code free shirt, and we'll throw in a free buff box shirt for you as well. Oh, I appreciate that. All you right, you go kill some one day. I will, I will. See All you right, soon. Bye. I'm going to try to record content. I haven't done this in a while, but we're getting back into it. I'm 
I'm not sure if I'm just like on a high or something, but the most incredible opportunities have been coming my way today and last night. Um, and it just goes to show when you like let go of things that don't matter to you or aren't serving you, you make way more room for positive things and positive opportunities that are aligned with your goals. But also comes um, the overwhelm of opportunities and that's usually what leads to my failure is sometimes I jump on opportunities a little too quickly without rationally thinking through everything. Um, it's kind of like when um, you like go to like a buffet, right? And you have like endless amount of food and you're like, oh yes, breakfast buffet, I'm gonna get an omelet, I'm gonna get a waffle, I'm gonna get strawberries, fruit, yogurt, um, and some of those mini croissant things, those are really freaking good. But then you re you forget that you said yes to all these things, but you forget how they make you feel. Like you feel a little bit overwhelmed. You like kind of get a taste of a everything, but you never end up finishing it. And then you end up probably feeling like shit. Um, and that's kind of like how I've taken opportunities so far in the past. And then um, having those tough conversations of letting it go has been tough. So I'm being a lot more conscious about what I'm saying yes to and not just jumping on every opportunity opportunity, making sure the hell yes is that I want, um, I'm thinking it through and then saying yes. Oh man, I feel good. I feel so good. This is my first time recording in the gym in a while. Every morning, 6 a.m., I start off with the uh, pre-workout, get into the gym, and then I come in and do, um, train my brain. So I'm picking out a podcast right now. See, I'm gonna set this up so that I can do this with two hands. I, I think I did a past discussion about um, how you need to separate your content and make it kind of align with what you're doing for that day or um, kind of have like a set content schedule so you don't get overwhelmed. Once again, overwhelmed. Mondays are my self-care day, so I listen to something that has to do with um, me um, and making myself like personal development. Um, Tuesdays, I try to do something like science related or like body and anatomy so I'm always um, getting information about how to improve my training uh, but I did listen to the alchemist instead yesterday because I'm still kind of on this personal development high and finding like my personal legend so today I'm gonna do Wednesday is always like my hump day for like business um, I am definitely sending a lot of business foundation down today so let's do this. I'm going to listen to a podcast. Lately, I've been listening to a lot of Jenna Kutcher. She's so freaking awesome. Let's see. See more episodes. And I try to find something that has to do with what I'm doing. She talks a lot about like social media, business management, being a woman in this industry. And she's very like vulnerable too. So I really, really like her. So I kind of like this. Uh, the crazy impacts of social media. Uh, some things you need to be doing during how much of what we want to see is true. <laughs> I mean, isn't that like a sucker punch to the stomach? Like, which one is it? Which one should I choose? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, we're very lucky because we are at a time where this conversation is very relevant and we are seeing a lot of change. But at the end of the day, the beauty industry and the world of media has billions of dollars behind it. So while we can all be saying that... You know, we'd like to see more diversity in media and we want to see more body types depicted and we want to hear the true real story behind women. There's also a lot of brands that require us to feel like we're not enough in order to buy their products. And those mm -hmm. brands have extraordinary amounts of money. So at some level, there's always going to be this drive for them to create a gap between what we have and what they need to sell in order to move us forward into purchasing that item. So I think that's the biggest hurdle really is that we're up against these mega companies who have so much money to support them <laughs> and so much power over the media and what we see in the media. But at the same time, I think it's really amazing that social media has come along and give us, the people, a platform to speak up as to what we like to see and, and what we want to see and to call brands out who aren't doing that. And we are seeing brands affected in a major way. It's mm -hmm. happening. Absolutely. We're seeing, we're seeing brands like Airy Real who are coming out, who you've done some work with, mm -hmm. who are moving with what the people want and are seeing 
positive impact on their bottom line. So there's, it's a very cool time to be part of this whole movement and conversation. So true. Absolutely. I partner with Ari all the time. I mean, I'm, I talked such a great conversation about um, how media has shifted and what these big companies now are focusing their marketing dollars on for actually making an impact on the community. They're realizing millennials right now, we're not looking at advertising the same. We are the people that want to know that yes, your brand is actually making an impact in the community and I wanna invest into you because you're investing into real people. And that's why like, I'm so pro like going the influencer route and helping people become influencers because I know these brands are looking for you and looking for people like me to work with and truly get their message out there in the right way so that we're making better, smarter marketing decisions and buying decisions and getting products that actually matter to us. Um, that was a great snippet. These are the kind of things I like to start my day off with. So today I've got a pretty big um, foundation work day. Oh, I'm excited, I'm gonna take you guys with me. Hey Siri, set my alarm for 20 minutes. The alarm set for 9.32 a.m. Hey Siri, how many calories are in a half cup of oatmeal? The answer is 55 dietary calories. Hey, you can ask Siri anything. I've been using him, I changed it to a boy so I could tell a boy what to do, um, to uh, set your alarm for 20 minutes. I've been doing that a lot because I'm trying to stay a lot more on schedule so that I can avoid this procrastination thing. I've realized something I can do is just give myself time limits and instead of making something perfect, I just get it done. So 20 minute limits for everything. My clock is actually running. So I'm gonna make some oatmeal and some eggs and try to eat that uh, during my breakfast time. I don't like to um, have technology around me. Um, that's kind of like my meditation time uh, during breakfast. So I'm gonna make some eggs, some oatmeal. I should. Yeah. Um, half of this. I'm gonna do honey. I am gonna be looking into meal prep companies soon, but I mean, those meals I'm gonna end up buying are really just. Um, when I'm on the go and don't have time to like stop to eat lunch or make lunch, I just want to be able to grab and go. But breakfast, I always try to make time to like sit down and eat properly. Okay, that egg is cracked. There's a lesson in abundance, right? You can say yes to any opportunity uh, and everything will come your way, but sometimes you've got to learn to say no to things to make more room for those hell yes opportunities that you actually think about being well rounded. The environment today uh, requires B2B and D2C marketers really to generate one-to-one -one personalized experiences with their prospects and customers. And this is where engagement marketing comes in. They need to do this across multiple channels and across customer life cycles across, you know, in some cases, very long periods of time. Now, when we consider that in the context of engaging marketing, it's very, very relevant as well because engaging marketing is all about building relationships, building relationships with your prospects and customers over their entire life cycle. Uh, content is king, um, but you know you can see on the slide there. There's a huge amount of content being created. Um, on top of that, it's very difficult to um, come up with the best content that's going to cut through and go viral every single time. So you really need to understand more about who you're talking to to cut through the noise um, and, and actually uh, engage with the um, with the audience. But that was the whole purpose of coming up with this like organization chart because I want people to realize what I'm doing. I want them to know that I'm trying to recreate the fitness industry so people don't only really perceive it as like, I have to sell a bunch of stuff in order to make it here. I have to be a professional bodybuilder or whatever titles has already been associated with it. I want so is that your goal or are you trying to empower brands through social media? I want to help empower brands through social media. 
So the whole mission is obviously like the SaaS platform, but then the three business entities would be my personal brand where I'm just like kind of sharing the journey of how to make that change in the industry. Then using my actual agency where I'm going to allow, give people the opportunity to come in and be a part of the fitness industry in a professional manner with all the different career opportunities I could offer. Like, being an account director, managing several brands, being an account executive, maybe like you're not ready to leave your full-time job just yet, but like you want a taste of what could be a professional fitness opportunity, managing accounts. Maybe you take over a bunch of accounts and then this is your full-time career. Um, or, you know, though I'm sure like as I grow, there'll be like a CFO, a CMO, like so many different entities, but that's a professional opportunity for people to work with brands they love change the tone. And then Sweat with ATL, this is like for people that are like on the come up, they want that event exposure, they want like they have a hospitality background or they just want to collaborate and meet people so they can be a part of like the events committee. Maybe they're a partner, um, meaning like, hey, I just launched this cool like fitness concept, I want to partner with you to get exposure. Um, and then they kind of come in with that kind of face or like they work under me as like a project manager for all these events. But this is something that's already flowing. This is great. This is what I'm working on. Yeah. And then this, I'm just now kind of pivoting and figuring out how I talk, communicate these things, but sharing the journey of it here. Got it. So that's the journey behind this. This is a journey, and this is what's actually being executed to get to this. Right. So it's like just changing the tone of the fitness industry and that's why it like, like I know I could take on the tech world and use the SaaS platform to help everyone else and I think I can do that later on, but I've got my own like problem to solve here and then once I make that impact here, then I can think full scale once this is all automated. Yeah, you guys I love it. It's good. It's good to work. I've got my LLC, I uh, have my EIN now. I need to go set up a bank. So if you establish your LLC here in Georgia, it's like 175, something like that, right? 100 bucks. 100 bucks. If you establish an LLC in California, it's over a grand. Yeah, that's why I, that's why I was looking. Wyoming has the best benefits, and it's the cheapest. It's fifty bucks, and they have some other benefits. Um, but then you have to set up a registered agent, so oh, you can yeah. set up a registered agent. But it's like twenty five bucks on top, and then you're still gonna get taxed for the money you're making because the money you're making, you're gonna have to roll into personal income in Georgia, which is still gonna get taxed. So the benefits start to not make as much sense. Why we should start our businesses in Atlanta. It's just easier, you know. Right now, I don't think that we need all these benefits. Yeah, and I think a lot of people misunderstand um, what they need to file themselves as in an LLC. Like, what category? It gets super yeah. good. Did you see like all the yeah, different the, categories? Uh, what's it? The S. CX or NAIC? Yeah, NAIC. So I like did a Google search. I was like, yeah, I I mean I just picked one honestly. I didn't even search. Yeah. So I was told like honestly that doesn't matter that much. So I put like there's nothing really in there that says like personal trainer like fitness industry. You have to like put it as a service, health and wellness, and then just like gyms, something like that because there was no option for like actually being a personal trainer or like doing mark fitness marketing or yeah. being a social media just influencer. Choose the best fit. Yeah. Like, it's, I think that it's gonna evolve as more people are getting into like online marketing and just like tech, the tech space in general. I think they're gonna have to create more titles. I don't know if that's a thing. That's done, but I did mine way too early. I actually filed, I think I was like on this high, I was like, I'm gonna start a business. And this is while I was still like at my agency, I remember it was like, 
two days before my ex-boyfriend and I was like two year three year anniversary so I was like I don't want to remember him on this day like what can I do to replace this memory so I was like I'm gonna start an LLC yeah. and then so I like created the LLC and then like for six months I was like I don't know what I'm doing like I had no business life like had no like income coming in I think I had like $40 from it a like nutrition workshop I hosted it wasn't until like actually January 2017 when I launched full time with this. But I didn't like change it over to a marketing agency. Yeah. It's, it could still change. Yeah, you can edit this one Yeah. But I, I, I repaid, yeah, and I already like refiled under that same LLC, Small and Strong Fitness. I think that's another thing. Like, what name did you put it under? I don't think the name is terribly important. I just said me and my brother are doing it, so my name's Andrew, or my name's Tyler, and it's Andrew. <laughs> Wait, so the but A you and have to... T, oh. The A and T um, company, LLC. Real, real <laughs> I put Small and Strong Fitness LLC, but I th so then um, comes DBA, which is doing business as, and then you can kind of differentiate all your different mm -hmm. business segments, so that's where I would create like a DBA of SAS brands or Sweat with ATL, and those would be my two DBAs. Yeah. But my accountant told me I'm, I don't need to do that yet. Work day. It's awesome. Tyler lives here. Tyler actually just told me about this really cool app that you can actually get right on your computer called Homo Done app, and it actually helps you track your time on the projects that you're allocating your time to. I do use Siri when I'm just kind of like on the go and need like 20 minutes on the clock, but this actually manages your tasks and it organizes it with, or kind of links it with Todoist, which is the app I use for any of my like note taking or um, to-do lists. You texted me that night. Oh, I forgot to use salt. Well, that salt. Is that salt? No, it's salt. That's good. 